There are places you should not go, for, for fear of death. The Reaper lives here, just like you and I. And just like you and I, he must ingest the living flesh of those less fortunate than him. There is a small place that I do not want you to visit, even on your holidays, because it is dark and evil place that I've been. When the darkness has overwhelmed my small decaying mind, some bad things flowed from my mind and through my pen. The brilliant blue ink itself seemed to turn to blood into my grace. Can you hear me? Well, I hope that your ears are working better than your tongue, so that you might use them to listen to my words. You have turned on the light at the end, beginning and middle of the tunnel, but some things remain shrouded in darkness. 
My Morrissey message I hope has helped, but what you need now is to the wall hole to the right of the fence. Oh, go now! There is no time to explain! Well, in fact, time is one of the few things we have in abundance down here. What surprises are spoiled by such catty curiosity? Unless my friends lie somewhere near you now. A friend in need is a friend indeed. But a friend that's dead is a poor conversationalist. May they rest in pieces. Ruptured, decomposing pieces. Poor Red is so hungry, he could eat both the horse and the young rippling stable hand. Sadly, pony flesh is so hard to come by in these parts, and man meat is so... just so bland. If your eyes happened upon a scurrying rodent, would you deliver the crunchy feast uh, by way of a final meal? On your travels for the tools with which you will fashion my rescue, you may discover the place of my last meal. Be careful. The shiny, solid floor of water is not as solid as it seems. Poor Red was almost swallowed whole. The two foolsy men who plummeted into my domain have long since departed, though not I expect from whence they came. I ate ravenously of biped meat that day, uh, but Red promises feasting only began when the men became pungent, when the stench of life had gone, and only the sweet aroma of decay remained. Where are you, my shiny knight? Have you really made it this far? I wait and wait, and yet the pot never boils. I remain trapped in my den of iniquity. Perhaps the gods have toyed with me once more. Sentenced me to yet more years in this place of eternal nightlight. But now, maybe my ill advice has ended you. Have you rung death's doorbell? Please don't leave poor Ren all alone once more. Like all the others. Good evening. You, you, you actually came. There is much that should leave my throat box now, but the words elude me. You came, you are so pretty, but I have been bad. The underworld already beckons me, so I suppose one further misdemeanor will change little. It is false pretension, and not dying light with which I have led you here. 
I do not give you the answers you want. You may wish to find what it is you seek, but that is a fiction. You cannot know what it is you sought through the vast leaden doorway, or else you would seek anything else in the world. No, the key stays with me, in here, so the life that has led me, horrible as it may be, is better still than the life that waits for you, hungry behind those doors. As replacements go, you shall be admirably abnormal. But you must wonder why this metal burning chamber is talking to you and the voice you knew only is red. For it is I, your companion, residing within. You see, I have waited for this day so many years. They won't let me die. They have parts of my head are uh, not my own. And I cannot take my life. It is against the rules. Please, the pain has gone on for so long. All I wanted was a friend, but now the time for chit chats and marshmallows by the fire has ended, and I hope that soon and so shall my life. I have knocked on the death's door for so long. Please, let him invite me in for tea.